Okay, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and we have a 1965 Shelby GT350 style Mustang for you. This particular car started life as an ACO car, which designates that it would have a 289 four barrel as the standard engine in this car back in 1965. We don't know if this is the correct motor in this car. A code cars were not numbered, serial numbered to match the uh, vehicle. However, it appears to be a four barrel 289 powered by Ford aluminum valve pan covers, Edelbrock intake manifold, four barrel carburetor, original radiator, no power steering, no power brakes, uh, has the numbers still intact on the uh, uh, dr driver's side uh, fender designating that it was an A code car. New battery, new hoses, new wires, new distributor cap, new water pump, all new belts, a very, very nice strong car underneath the hood. Car runs and drives impeccably. Does have the uh, Shelby style bracing with the car and it does have Shelby fiberglass and metal hood also that goes with the car. Nice car in the engine compartment, appears to be a Shelby. So what we wanted, and that's what we got here, a Shelby appearance in a very nominally priced 1965 Mustang. Okay, you're in Daytona Beach at Hangsters, and we're in front of our 1965 Shelby style GT350 Mustang right now. Guardsman blue on uh, white, striping the way it would be in 1965, of course carrying through to the Valance and the uh, filler panel. The correct Shelby style grille. Uh, the uh, bumper chrome is very, very nice. Bumper fitment is very nice on the car. A little bit more out on this side in the front than the other, than the driver's side, but not much. About a quarter of an inch difference uh, between the two. It could be easily adjusted. It does have the, sh uh, the Shelby style pins on it, and of course, the scoop. Fitment of the hood is. It's as nice as you would expect a Shelby hood to fit. These hoods were made out of fiberglass, and they were composite, fiberglass and metal structural framework underneath. And through the years, they would have a lot of warpage to them. And this particular one does, and they all seem to have that problem where it would rise halfway back the fender. And you can see that there is, uh, the alignment is there. It's just the contour of the uh, uh, hood itself doesn't line up absolutely flawlessly with the fender itself. Other than that, you got a nice front end of the car. All the software around it is nice. All your anodized aluminum. Anything on the front end of this car makes you want to believe that it is a 1965-66 Shelby GT350. Beautiful car. Let's see what's on the side. Okay, going down the driver's side of our uh, Shelby style, 65 Mustang. Paint on this car is very, very nice. It's uh, better than, than uh, driver quality, but not quite a show quality car. Uh, the paint is better than it would have been from the factory in 1965, certainly whenever the car was produced. Nice solid tin on the car all around. Shelby style, optional wheels on this particular vehicle. Really give it a lot of pizzazz, a lot of look to it. Correct wiper arms. The blades appear to be off of like a 69 or a 70 Mustang, but uh, uh, they're, they're fine. Uh, window doesn't have any marks or, or wipe marks from the uh, wear of a wiper on it. Uh, it is a tinted windshield. A little tiny mark right here. You won't see it in the uh, video, but there is one. Other than that, the trim around the windshield is, is very, very nice. Uh, transition from the uh, front fender to the rocker panel to the door. Is as nice as you're ever going to find on any of these cars. Drip rail molding, and a couple little weaves here. Again, it's not, it, I can hardly see them. I can feel them when I run my hand across, but I can't see them. So they're probably not going to show up in the video or if you're even looking at the car. The wipes, the uh, whiskers around the uh, uh, door, around the window, are just as nice and fresh as you would ever hope to find. Of course, the Shelby Racing Mirror. Rubber around the uh, wing is nice and soft and pliable. Again, the door, you can see the, the finish and fit on the door to the rocker panels is as good as you could ever hope for one of these cars to be. 
It does have uh, really nice chrome on the uh, handles and the, uh, the trim on the vehicle with the front bumper. Now it's very, very, the chrome quality is very good on this. It has the side scoops. It does not have the actual ducting for pulling the uh, rear brakes, which would be indicative of a real Shelby. But this car, it being a commemorative, a style car, it's certainly not going to show you that. Side windows are plexiglass as they would be with a Shelby. Stripes, of course, go over the top of the uh, roof, which, by the way, has no imperfection whatsoever. And there are no dings or marks or chips or anything on this vehicle. As a matter of fact, we haven't found a stone chip yet. We're still hunting, though. But uh, trim around the back window. Absolutely no marks whatsoever. Tinted glass on the back light also. Trim around your uh, plexiglass windows. Just really, really, really nice. Quarter panel the same way. Nice tin everywhere. It's a very nice car down the driver's side. There's no waviness or no uh, deviations uh, down the sides of this body. The, uh, uh, the quarter panel, the door, the fender all line up just as nice as you could possibly hope for uh, a, a 60s vehicle to have as far as uh, uh, fitment. Nice car on the driver's side. Let's see if we can find something on the back. Okay, around the back end of our uh, Shelby style 65 Mustang, you can see the deck lid, the fitment of this fiberglass deck lid in relation to the, uh, uh, the rest of the uh, tin on the vehicle. And through the years, again, you know, fiberglass the distorting, uh, it, Corvettes had the same problem uh, back in this era. And uh, the fitment is a little questionable. I mean, a lot of it can be adjusted out, some of it can't. Uh, basils around the tail lights, really, really nice condition. The lenses themselves are nice and shiny and crisp. Again, you know the transitional striping from the, the front the whole way back carried completely down on the, uh, the vehicle the way a Shelby would be. Really is very indicative of a real Shelby Mustang, which this one is not. It does have the trumpet style GT exhaust, which would not have been Shelby, but really add a lot of pop, a lot of flair to these vehicles. They really look good and they sound great. Chrome on the back bumper. Bumper fits absolutely beautiful in this car, too, by the way, in the back. Now that really does fit well. Chrome's beautiful. No pulls or dents or anything on the rear volance on the vehicle. Shelby GT350 designation, also a Shelby style, original style equipment uh, uh, gas cap on this particular vehicle. Nice car across the back end, it's a very attractive car. Nice color combination too, a little ding right there too, I just noticed that, how you got a ding fiberglass, I don't know, but there's a ding in it right there. Okay, passenger side of our GT350 style Mustang, trim around the back window. Yeah, a little ding here, a little tiny one. Another little, couple little tiny marks there. You can't really see them, but they're there. This is the only real ding in it. You may be able to see it. The rest of it's just fine. Trim around our plexiglass windows is fine. The um, quarter panel in this car is the same as the other one, just as nice and fresh looking as you could possibly hope for. Really nice paint, nice lips, undisturbed, uncut, unrolled, or from larger tires being on it through the years. Our scoop the same way. I love the way these doors fit. They're just really, really nice fitment on these. Um, doors to the quarter panel, to the rocker panel. Little tiny chip here. Wipes are fine. Rubbers are all fresh on this car too, by the way. There's uh, uh, there's no crispness or, or hardness or flakiness or anything to any of the rubber uh, seals on the vehicle. They've all been addressed through the years. It, it's a really nicely well done, uh, well done vehicle. Door panel, same way on this one. Wow, on the fender, the same as it was on the other side, as nice as you could possibly hope for it to be. Original equipment style antenna. The GT350 designation on the front. Just as a Shelby would have it, the front wheels rolled up just a little tiny bit to clear the uh, front wheels. Again, paint, you'll see the overhang of the hood, the arch of the hood from the springs being on the fiberglass hood through the years. It's there, we can't do anything about it. 
1965 Mustang Fastback in a Shelby GT350 style. Uh, the car is, is really a nice car. It's better than driver quality car. It is not a show quality car. We do have a couple here that are show quality cars, and one is a questionable uh, 66 Shelby GT350. The car itself drives, handles, runs as nice as you could possibly ask. The paint, the fit, the finish, we just went around the vehicle. We still didn't find any stone chips either, by the way. There are a couple of very, very minor imperfections which are expected in a, in a car that's 50-some years old. The car is just an absolute fantastic representation of a GT350 Shelby Mustang. And it's not going to be priced high like most of the uh, Mustang Fastbacks are. This is going to be a very nominally priced car for you. Okay, we're inside our 1965 Shelby GT350 style Mustang. A great car inside. The headliner is as tight as a drum, as nice as you could ever expect it to be. The rear seat is a flop down rear seat, fold down rear seat, so you have a lot of storage space in the back. All the trim around the, uh, your side windows, which uh, were Shelby installed type windows, uh, that's all fresh looking and no cracks or, or uh, deviations or anything in it. All the trim around the uh, rear window inside is very nice. Sun visors are just as they were when they were new. Nice clear rear view mirror. Shelby style, style uh, steering wheel in it. Uh, Shelby horn ring center. Door panels, openers, uh, wing, uh, window cranks, everything on both doors is just as fresh and nice as you'd ever hope to find. Gauge cluster is new. Uh, all the lenses are crystal clear, the gauges function, they all work as they should. Uh, Mustang aftermarket radio, no one's cut the dash, it still retains its original uh, dimensions for the uh, uh, original equipment Mustang radio that was in it. Glove box door the same way, the chrome is absolutely beautiful. Disc brakes on this car, you can see that the uh, designation is on the pedal itself. The kick panels are original and just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. The upholstery is beautiful, back seat and the front seat. Uh, the, the upholstery is just the way it was in 1965 when it left the store. Carpeting is all brand new and crisp and clean. Uh, all your uh, knobs on the dashboard are nice and shiny, chrome the way they were in 65. Same with the uh, shifter on the uh, uh, center of the floor here. Uh, everything, the chrome inside this vehicle is just the way it would have been in 1965 when it left the, uh, uh, the store. No cracks or marks or anything on the uh, padded dash on this car. This is a very, very nice, nominally priced Fastback Mustang in a GT350 style for a 1965 uh, Mustang. When you're driving this car, no one will know that this thing isn't a real GT350 unless they start checking serial numbers. Car has a good representation. The interior of this car is just as fresh and clean as it was when it was new. The paint is better than driver quality, but not quite show quality. But the car isn't priced like a show car either. So when you look at this on your Hangster's website, you'll be very impressed as to all we need for this vehicle. And you can have yourself an absolute fantastic I was going to say summer ride, but it can be 12 months out of the year, depending on where you're at. We're in Florida now, so it can be a 12-month car year. Pennsylvania, you're lucky to get six. Fantastic vehicle. You can have a lot of fun in it, and it's here at Hankster's for you. Cranny shifts nice and firm. Speedometer works as it should. Fuel gauge working. Oil pressure working, amp gauge working. No hands on the steering wheel, we're going uh, 50 mile an hour. Let's see how it stops with no hands on the wheel. Straight as can be. Nice straight running car, turn signal to the left works, turn signal to the right works, nice straight running vehicle.
shake, so Chevy's again, look here, buddy. the hands on the wheel, straight as an arrow down the road. Car shifts and handles and drives just as nicely as could be. Everything in it appears to work as it should. It's a nice straight car. All right, we're underneath our 1965 Shelby GT350 style Mustang. Nice fastback car, white, blue stripes, guardsman blue stripes. Disc brakes in the front, new idler arms, new rotors, new brake calipers, new starter. You see the engine's been out, everything's been repainted and freshened up on the engine. Cast iron exhaust manifolds. New bushings for the uh, heavy duty sway bar for the front, also new sway bar links. The ball joints appear to be fairly new too. <coughs> Tranny cooling lines, the still original and nice intact. Uh, idler arm is a new idler arm. Pitman arm appears to be fairly new also. Bell housing, no drips or anything on it, no drips on the engine, you can see that. Also, no drips off the uh, transmission pan. Front uh, subframes, uh, they do have some superficial, some dents in them from being jacked up on the subframes through the years. You know, the age of this car kind of dictates that it probably has been jacked up more than once. Um, there are some superficial dents, marks in the uh, subframes here which have absolutely nothing uh, detrimental to the structure of this vehicle. They're, they're, they're not going to hurt the integrity of the, uh, the structure of this vehicle at all. Floor pans are very nice in this vehicle. It's, in fact, I can't tell if they're the originals or if they've been replaced through the years. They're just really, really nice. Uh, the pinch welds to the rocker panels appear to still be there. And the uh, spot welds to the uh, Subframes also appear to still be there. Two inch pipes off of the uh, cast iron manifolds with an H pipe, crossover pipe, give you a little bit more juice through the uh, mid range and a lot more top end horsepower too. New universal joint. The um, parking brake assembly is intact and functional. It appears to be original also. Floor pans through the uh, center of the car are just really, really nice. I don't see any jack-up marks on them through the years being uh, inadvertently jacked on the floor pan instead of the uh, torque boxes in the rear or the uh, subframes in the front, which we can see they were jacked up here. Nice car underneath so far. We're halfway through it. Let's see what the other half looks like. Okay, our two-inch pipes terminating into uh, two brand spanking new under chassis uh, original equipment style mufflers the uh, torque boxes on the front where the spring mounts are are really really nice one little tiny thing here from again a jack stand or a jack through the years lifting this up maybe one here too it's very <laughs> almost not noticeable set of traction bars lakewood style traction bars on the rear because this guy kind of needs them Brand new rear shocks. There are new shocks in the front also, which I neglected to mention. 8-inch Ford uh, heavy-duty rear end for this uh, vehicle. Drum brakes in the rear. Nice arch to the rear springs. The gas tank appears to be the original gas tank. It still even has the original drain plug in it yet. Uh, there's no dents or mark. Well, yeah, one little tiny one. You can hardly even notice it there. Drop-downs in the quarter panels are real nice and solid appearance-wise. It still even retains its original tie-downs uh, whenever the car was shipped new from the factory. Looks like inch and three-quarter pipes <coughs> out of the uh, uh, original equipment type mufflers transitioning into those megaphone pipes that uh, are, are GT style that go out through the rear of the Lance. The undercarriage of this car is very, very presentable. It's very nice. Uh, it's not a show quality car. It's a good solid better than driver quality vehicle that gives you the look of a 350 Shelby GT for a very small fraction of that money. It is a good running car which we'll see in a video that we do here shortly. 
interior's nice. Everything's nice on this vehicle. We can't uh, really say other than a couple of very minuscule uh, imperfections in the vehicle. There's nothing else that uh, you can say negative about it. It's a nice car, and it's available here at Hangsters, and you can have a heck of a lot of fun with it.